Hey guys, it's Anne Marie here, and today I have another organization video for you. That mess. <laughs> that tool tote mess. Um, I've had that for a really long time. Like, it's an archiver's tote, if that tells you anything. So definitely over 10 years old, but, um, you know, I've, I've crammed different configurations of varying tools across the years, but I've never taken the time to really clean it out. I'm trying to get out my commonly used tools um, and they would tangle up with my heat embossing gun um, or the cords for my flat iron that I used for the ribbon and just <laughs> ticked me off. <laughs> so this is usually when I decide um, I'm going to clean something is when I get ticked off enough by it. <laughs> so. Um, I put aside what I thought I was going to do that evening and just ended up dragging all this out. Does anybody else get really awesome cleaning energy when they're mad? Because I do. Alright, anyway, I've been blathering on and my intention for these organization videos is I want to I want to kind of just be in the background for you. I want it to be running, maybe make you feel like I'm there hanging out with you. We're both just working on our own thing. Um, that always helps me. Like I mentioned earlier about cleaning energy, I will oftentimes pull up cleaning videos on YouTube and let them be running in the background while I'm cleaning too. I don't know why. It makes me feel better, like somebody's doing this with me. So I just wanna encourage you to grab your own project and we'll do this together. And I will just pop in and out when I wanna talk, but in general, I'm just gonna let the video run and let the music play and we'll both clean up our spaces. All right. Um, ooh, and this, this was a gift from a message board friend, Sarah, um, who, if I can find a link to like an Etsy or anything, I don't think she has an online presence. I think she does more in-person craft fairs, but if I can find a link, I'll put it in the description box. She makes a lot of really awesome, fun, handmade sewn things like this pop-up pencil pouch. You might've seen these on Instagram or Facebook ads where they're long enough to hold your pencils and markers, but then you can unzip it and pull the top down and it makes its own little pencil cup that can just stay there.
Um, but every once in a while I would come across a pen that just won't work, usually a gel pen. And you can see it's got half a barrel of ink. It should work. Um, what do you do when that happens like to you? Do you hold on to stuff and really try to make it work? I know that there's ways online, you know, supposedly reactivating pens and stuff. I've just never had success myself with that stuff. Um, so I hate to do it, but I pitched that pen because I can't, I can't really make it work. That doesn't feel very sustainable or frugal. I'm wasting something. So I'm curious to hear what you do with dead pens. All right, so here you see me trimming some loose threads. This tool totes held up incredibly well for 10 years of use, but I do want it to maybe not look <laughs> 10 years old. I'd like it to look a little nicer. Um, to me, this is part of being frugal and being sustainable is taking care of the things that you own. I am not always good at it, um, but this is a case where I, I'm trying to be. So, you know, those loose threads, I can catch them on things, I could snag, um, and I, I could rip open a seam or something. And just, again, I'm just wiping everything down with a damp rag and stuff, just seeing what I can get off. I didn't invest a lot of time in this. Um, like that green splotch on the bottom, it was just gonna spread. So I didn't invest a lot of time. I didn't make things perfect, but I just clean them up a little bit and it does, it looks nicer. It's more inviting to use. So I liked that. Here's another spot where I'm just, I'm gonna clean up my tools as I go. Um, specifically, I'm cleaning my scissor blades here. What I'm using basically from here through the end of the video is, um, I have one rag that is dampened with water. I have another rag that is dry um, and I'm using a corner or a small section of it with rubbing alcohol and it's it gets pretty much everything off. Um, please test surfaces <laughs> before you dive in with rubbing alcohol. Um, as you'll see later, I am cleaning off a Tim Holtz ruler and it's already been damaged. It's chipped. It's missing the metal guard. I still feel like it's useful, so I haven't replaced it yet, but um, you'll see that some of the writing comes off when I am cleaning it with the rubbing alcohol. And so those grid lines on those rulers are very handy. That's like one of the reasons I love those rulers. So um, I don't want you to try this and take off, you know, important things from your tools. But that was the only thing that had a problem for me. So just go slow and test surfaces. <laughs> um, but it, this worked great for, you know, cleaning off goo and gunk and random splotches of who knows what. Um, and 
it dried quickly so I didn't feel bad about using it on you know metal tools and that kind of thing or putting it you know back in my tool tote it was already dry by the time I got it back in oh and <laughs> Here I'm just putting a piece of ribbon on the uh, handle of these shears. These are only for my fabric and ribbon cutting. That's all these scissors can be used for. And so I am keep meaning to and keep not, so now's the time, I keep uh, meaning to tie a piece of ribbon around the handle so that I can remember that. And more importantly, my family can hopefully remember that. Oh, and these, these are yarn needles, um, but I use them for my paper stitching. They make larger holes, they're easier to um, thread, 
And so I enjoy using these way more for my hand stitching on layouts. I can be still be pretty precise, but I can use um, more embroidery floss if I need to so it shows up more clearly on the layout. And it's just way easier to handle because they're larger needles. And they're not as sharp, which is really nice. <laughs> Thank you.
Okay, so that's it for my tool tote. Everything's been cleaned and wiped down and vacuumed and feels so fresh and inviting and ready to use. I just really liked it and it kind of led to me uh, doing a little bit of maintenance on my space as well, my cutting mat and my plexiglass top. So yes, if you have a plexiglass top, again, rubbing alcohol for the win. It takes off all the smudges and stuff. I'm afraid I've damaged it a little bit because I spilled acetone on it. So don't use acetone, but I highly recommend rubbing alcohol. <laughs> Anyway, um, I think that's everything. So guys, thanks so much for hanging out with me today. I hope you accomplished whatever it is you were hoping to accomplish. And if you enjoyed this video, please let me know. I'd love to hear it. Um, there's my tool tote in its little home right next to my left hand when I'm scrapping. So I can just grab anything I need when I need it. All right, guys, take care. And I will see you next week. Bye.